we'll get here with a look at the next episode of the Friday Zone. Today where you can fart out loud, you don't have to be embarrassed. And all of these foods make us poop. They help. Okay. <laughs> so today we're talking about chemical reactions. Ooh. So check out the next episode of the Friday Zone. Right meow. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the Gigacity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922 and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Ethan, mind your manners. Elbows off the table, sit up straight. Sheesh, what's next? Ethan, don't play with your food. Uh, no, that's okay. The week is done and it's time for fun. There's room for everyone in the Friday zone. So much to see, who will we meet? It all happens magically. Welcome to the Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Cassia. And I'm Ethan. Today's show is a total gas, Cassia. A gas? You mean like, cool, daddy -o? <laughs> Yeah, but also because we're going to do some fun CO2 experiments with our pal Nick from the Bloomington Wonder Lab Science Museum later. But first, a gasser of a song on, on the, the Friday Zone, Zone Playlist. at the same time. Everything was normal at the park until somebody mm. and, and then, then everybody, everybody stopped. stopped. Did somebody just fart? I think it was the little girl. And then everybody stared. Reaches would always happen when somebody mm. farts out loud in public. But tears saying, excuse me, the little girl who farted just gave a big smile. You don't have to be embarrassed. You can just let it out and have fun at the same time. And the results of your test are blood pressure is normal. She farted like 18 million times. It's just my Everybody gets to two. You 
see in school on Fart Out Loud Day, the government requires schools to teach students about, well, farts. Social studies. Read Ben Franklin's letter, Fart Proudly, which is all about fart. Science. How and why do we fart? Language arts. Write about how you feel when you fart. Math. Chart the frequency of farts. STEM. How to program a robot to make fart sounds. Spanish. Por favor, de repetir en español. Tomás se tiró un pedo en la biblioteca. Tomás se tiró un pedo en la biblioteca. You can call it Fold for Short. National Fart Out Loud Day. Call it Fold for Short. You can also call it Fold for Short. You can call it Fold for Short. It makes school more fun and enjoyable on that day. Call it Fold for Short. Don't tell me what to do, backup singers. Although Fart Out Loud Day seems all happy and full of laughs, you have to remember there are downsides. It's an issue. Don't take the for credit. Get up and go outside. Just today, when you fart, you don't have to happy. All right. Fart out loud day. Smells like fart out loud day to me. That's right. Happy. Fart out loud day. Oh, what's that? I couldn't hear you over the whole world farting. Felix. Hi, Kayla. How are you? Good. How are you? I am great. What are we doing today? Today we're going to talk about fiber. <gasps> what is fiber? It's in the plants that we eat. Ah. Oh, wait, wait. I know what it does. What? It makes us poop. Yes, that's right? one of the yeah. main things that it helps us do. Yeah. It poop. helps maintain a healthy digestive system. Yeah. Yeah. So it's found in fruits, vegetables, and grains. Oh. Yep, so today I brought an apple okay. and celery oh. and some black beans. And, and all of these foods make us poop? They help. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes, and I've also brought Amy along to help. Oh, oh, hey, Amy. Hi yes. again, Felix. Good to see you. So there's two types of fiber. Okay. Okay, there's soluble fiber. Uh-huh. And that absorbs water, which allows your body to absorb nutrients, oh, which is very okay. important. Okay. And another one is insoluble fiber. Uh-huh. Insoluble fiber does not absorb water. Oh. But it allows our digestive system to speed up, uh -huh. and it prevents things like constipation. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. That is not fun. That's when no. you cannot poop. Yeah. That's not fun. Have you had trouble going to the bathroom sometimes? No, because Felix is a puppet, so I don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Well, many kids might experience constipation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Felix had a friend once who had it. Yes. So not good. They might not be getting enough insoluble fiber. Oh. How can they get that fiber? For instance, they might want to eat some celery. Oh. Yeah, so make sure you tell all your friends things like celery and wheat, whole wheat bread uh -huh. and cereals. Those things can help get your digestive system moving. Those are the good poop foods. Yes, okay. yes. And another thing that fiber does is it kind of acts like a scrub brush. Uh -huh. So it cleans your digestive system, oh. removing bacteria and toxins. Wow. Like this. Like Amy. Oh, Amy. Oh, that's... Oh. That's what that's what happens inside of you? Yes. Wow. That's a lot like what happens. It just removes all the toxins and bacteria that your body wants to get rid of. That is amazing. Yes, so it has a lot of health benefits. Great. Yeah. So make sure you eat a lot more fiber. Yeah. Every day. Lots of fiber. You will poop better. <laughs> Our friend is here to show us how to recycle an egg carton into a litter of baby turtles. We're going to need an empty egg carton, light and dark green paint, a paintbrush, some green pom-poms and pipe cleaners, scissors, glue, and some googly eyes. First, cut a section out of the egg carton. Paint that section of the egg carton light green. Add some spots with dark green paint. Glue googly eyes to a large pom-pom, and then glue the pom-pom onto the painted piece of egg carton. Cut green pipe cleaners into small sections. Glue to the inside of the shell to give your turtle legs. All done. Repeat this process with the rest of the egg carton and you'll have a whole litter of baby turtles in no time. Hello everybody, my name is Sam Bartlett. 
and welcome to the world of Stuntology! Today, another impossible stunt that anybody can do. All right, you're gonna like this stunt. It involves simply a small bottle and a straw. But I need one volunteer to show you how to do this great stunt. Uh, volunteer, 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 volunteer. Yes, you, come here, in pink. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for being my volunteer. Uh, so this stunt is called shoot water out of a bottle stunt. And it's beautiful. Um, well, you help, you're gonna help me, right? All right, I want you to hold this right about there, okay? Is that all right? Perfect. Now, I'm gonna do the stunt, but I just remember the most important part. I need to protect you. Um, so you don't get soaking wet. All right, good. Very good. Maybe I'll do this part too. All right. Can you still see? Good. All right. Good. Actually, that's all that matters. All right, so to do the stunt, to shoot water out of a bottle is pretty easy. All you need is a straw and a bottle. As I said, you put the straw in the bottle and then cover the end of the bottle with your mouth, leaving no little air holes in the opening. And then you just blow really, really hard and you're gonna catch the water, all right? You ready? One, two, three. Whoa! That was a little too powerful. Uh, hey, thank you very much. You were a really good volunteer. All right, uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Tomorrow? <laughs> and now, a story from a winner of the WTIU Kids Writers Contest. Today when I was swimming out the pool with my friends Andrea and Zoe, a whirlpool surrounded my feet. Andrea and Zoe started going into a huge conversation about ocean animals and acted like I didn't exist. I said hello repeatedly louder each time, but they didn't even bat an eyelash. They started drifting away, but I swam toward them. I was much quicker than before. Why? I looked down instead of feet at the end of my legs. Two bright red fins. My white legs had a dark blue stripe running down either side. Was I a mermaid? Something told me to swim over to the drain. I was thinking about fish, tiny ones. Suddenly, I was moving quickly. I was in the drain. I raised my hand to slow my transportation through the pipes. Wait a minute, I was a fish. I was a ship, sh I was a, I was a shapeshifter. Immediately, I burst out of the pipe. I was in open water, the ocean. Somehow I knew it was the Atlantic Ocean, but I was back in, more, in mermaid form. I saw a sand golem palace rise up out of the ocean floor and many mermaids and mermen and mergirls and merboys playing, talking, eating, shopping, playing with their catfish or taming their dogfish. Right next to me, some purple coral had black octopuses ink on it. I read, welcome to Atlantis. I wanted to explore, but I thought my friends would probably wonder where I was, so I decided to go back. I turned around to leave, but behind me was nothing but a huge black trench. Above me was a small pipe. Fish form, I thought, and soon I was back at the pool. I didn't have fins or weird markings on my legs. Andrea and Zoe hadn't moved from their spot. We were all laughing at the joke Andrea made before I got fins. 
I wanted to tell my friends about what happened, but I was not exactly sure what happened myself. But I knew this was only the beginning of my adventures with fins for feet. How would you like to see something you wrote on the Friday Zone? It's easy. Just enter the WTIU Kids Writers Contest. Ask your teacher how to enter, or request an entry form from WTIU at indiana.edu. Welcome back. We're here with our friend Nick from the Wonder Lab. Nick, what are we doing today? So today we're talking about chemical reactions. Ooh, and how do we get started? So, how many of you have ever mixed baking soda and vinegar? Yeah, so what happens when you mix baking soda and vinegar? Yeah. It creates a volcano oh, eruption. Yeah, so you get a bubbly eruption of, of bubbles from the baking soda and the vinegar. So what that is, that's a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction is when you take two things, you mix them together, and you get something new. So that new thing, that thing that makes the bubbles, is carbon dioxide. And so everyone take a deep breath in, and out. What you're breathing out is partly carbon dioxide. So it's the gas that you're breathing out. And this reaction makes that gas. Okay, so can you guys help me make some carbon dioxide with our baking soda and our vinegar? All right, so what I need you to do is take this baking soda and go ahead and shake just a little bit into our funnel and into our flask. Okay, yep, so just add it in there. That's great. And so now we have some baking soda in our flask. Okay, all right, so we've got our baking soda in our flask. Um, next, before we start our chemical reaction, we're gonna put on our safety glasses. So we have safety glasses for you and safety glasses for you. All right, and now we're ready for our chemical reaction. Take this out. And so, when we add our vinegar to our baking soda, we're gonna see that fizzling, we're gonna see that carbon dioxide. And one thing about carbon dioxide that's really cool is that carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So our carbon dioxide, it's not just gonna float up out of our flask, it's gonna stay here and it's gonna stay inside of our flask. Right, are you ready? So what I need you to do is with two hands, go ahead and add some of that to our flask. I can help you out just a little bit. And we're gonna see that bubbling, see that chemical reaction. That's perfect. Ooh, Look at there that. We go. Yeah. Isn't that cool? No. So yeah, that's our yeah. chemical reaction happening right there. Those bubbles, that's that carbon dioxide bubbling out of our mixture. So we'll add a little bit more. Make sure we can really get that carbon dioxide. Wow. There we go. Why can't you just do a baking soda? You make it come up all over. <laughs> we don't want to interrupt because we want to keep that carbon dioxide in our flask for our next step. So for our next step, we have these candles. And so we can light our candles. And when you have a birthday cake, you sing happy birthday, what do you do at the end of the song? Yeah. Blow it out. Yeah, you blow out the candles. So we're going to see if we can blow out our candles with the carbon dioxide in our flask. So right now I'll light these candles. We can get them all lit. Hey, and is it possible to turn the lights down for this one? Just a little bit? See. Boy, we can see our candles just a little better. Right. <laughs> so we'll see if we can oh. turn the lights down a little bit. There we go. And so now we have our candles. And so when you blow out your birthday candles, part of what you're breathing out is CO2. And now we have CO2, our carbon dioxide, in our flask here. We can empty that gas into our candles, being careful not to dump out the liquid. And we can see our candles make... Whoa! There we go. We'll make our candles go out. And now if we have another sort of flame or light, because fire needs oxygen to burn, it can't burn in carbon dioxide. If I put this flame in here, it'll go out. So we can try it again. Flame, and it goes out. Because it can't burn in that carbon dioxide that we breathe out. How cool is that? That's really cool. That's right. cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nick, and we'll be right back.
Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Zog no understand. What are these words? What words, Zarg? All of them. I know not what they mean. Well, you know EAP's black cat, right? Of course. Every shadowling knows the Dark Lord's black cat. Hmm. Well, a tiger is a giant orange jungle cat. Just how big is giant? Giant. Like really, really big. Bigger than you or me and able to swallow you in one gulp. <gasps> that is big. Mm. William Blake is describing the creation of the tiger. For example, do you know how cat's eyes seem to glow in the dark? Yeah. Listen to this. In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? See, he is describing how a tiger's eyes glow. Yeah, very creepy. Mm. Zarg likes creepy. <laughs> May I continue? Please tell Zarg more of this fierce four-legged beastie. On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? Who is this? Who sees the fire? Is it some other jungle beastie? Uh, no, silly. The poet is referring to the creator. The Dark Lord? No, God. Oh. Hmm. And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? What is sinews? Well, uh, they are your tendons. Uh, what is that word you speak? Tendons? Uh, the tendons uh, tie your muscles to your bones. Oh. Often sinews also refer to the source of strength, vigor, or power. Peggy girl child. Yes, Sark. Thank you for reading to Zarg. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Help, someone just stole my wallet. Oh no, Sammy, what do they look like? Uh, B, I don't know, it happened so fast. Mm, this is tricky, but I think I know what to do. We'll sketch them. But B, I'm terrible at drawing. You don't have to draw, Sammy. Along with being a master forensic scientist, I am also a certified police sketch artist. The police call me when they need a sketch of a criminal. Okay, I think I'm ready. Don't worry, Sammy, we'll catch them. First, did you notice any really distinguishable features? Uh, yes. Was there anything about them that stood out to you? Yes, um, he was a man. He had, had really dark, curly hair. He had green eyes, he had a, a re really sharp chin, a, a long nose, like really long nose, a really small mouth, and a mustache, and a scar along oh. his right eye. Okay, I think... I got it. Does this look like the man? Yes, that's him. I'm gonna go show this to people on the street and see if anyone has seen him. <laughs> Thanks to you all for helping us solve the case. See you next time. Boat, rope, coat, float. Oh, hi there, I'm a goat. And I was just thinking about all these words that rhyme with the word goat. Here are a few more, remote, gloat, Moat, dote, and of course, quote. Today on All About Animals, we're going to talk about goats. So let's get goating. I mean going. Welcome to All About Goats. Uh, animals. So, you want to know more about goats? You have your goat book handy? There are more than 450 million goats in the world. China has the most goats, and the Chinese word for goat is Cheyenne. We goats come in thousands of color combinations, from jet black to blue. Hi, my name is Lily. What's your name? Aloysius. That's a funny name for a goat. I had no control of this. 
My parents gave me this name when I was just a kid. You see, a baby goat is called a kid. You're kidding me. So what is the name for a male and a female goat? A female goat is called a nanny, and a male is named Billy. I had an uncle named Billy, and come to think of it, he's kind of a goat. Did he like to jump and play on rocks? Did he have a beard? What about horns? No, Uncle Billy would eat anything and was kind of smelly. Your uncle is no goat. We goats are very clean animals. Our fur is resistant to water and dirt. Plus, we don't eat everything. In fact, we prefer to graze on the tops of weeds more than grass. Do you know some companies rent out goats to eat grass and weeds rather than mo? I did read that. So, Lily, do you drink milk? Sometimes. Why? Goat milk is the most consumed milk in the world. It is very unique. It can be used in making soap. Sailors used to bring goats on their ship so they could have fresh milk every day. It is also naturally homogenized. What does homogenized mean again? It means the same throughout. Is there anything else you would like to tell me about goats? We goats are very important creatures. We are the national animal of the country of Pakistan. Furthermore, goats in Ethiopia first discovered the coffee bean. Do you know President Abraham Lincoln's two sons had a pet goat in the White House? I heard that also. My dad said we have had a few goats in the White House since then. I would not know. I did not goat for them. It was nice meeting you today, Lily, but I got a goat. I'm Aloysius the Goat, and we'll see you next time on All About Animals. Thanks for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to visit our website, fridayzone.org, to watch past episodes, play games, and see behind-the-scenes photos. And remember to live, learn, and play the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone way. way. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the Gigacity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Teachers, do you want your kids to learn more possible stuff from the Friday Zone? Well, now they can. We have a complete curriculum guide based on segments from the show. Each lesson plan follows the Indiana standards of learning. Request a free copy on our website, fridayzone.org, right now.